right now, it's six minutes after seven Kenyan time. Time for us to weigh in on the way it is right here on Morning Express. I'll introduce the panel, but before that, just a quick reminder, we're going to be opening up the phone line, so you're welcome to participate. You can also do that via Twitter. Now, to my immediate left, I have uh, none other than Ambrose Weder, who is a lawyer. Thank you for joining us. You. We also have Chris Pasiankem, who is a political analyst. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Thanks. We have uh, Professor Michael Wainai, who is a political blogger, uh, also uh, continuing. He was with us earlier on. And we're expecting uh, Senator Omar Hassan to be joining us as we continue. And this is the panel for the way it is. I also have Michelle Ngele, uh, who's going to be reading through some of your comments as they come through and also taking calls once we get there. Gentlemen, let's start with the way it is. And uh, just on the backdrop of uh, what we were looking at the dailies this morning, and uh, we were almost going, well, being caught off guard, you know, having that discussion, is the question question of BSs um, accompanying the president and campaigning. According to Manoa Sipisu, there's nothing wrong with that. And apparently, all they're doing is highlighting the successes of Jubilee. They're not campaigning. Where do you think uh, Manoa Sipisu is taking Kenyans for a ride? No, I don't think so. I think uh, this is a, a sitting president. He's not an acting or a coming president. It's a sitting president. And part of the things that he has to tell Kenyans is that for the last four and a half years, what has he been doing? And that is okay for the president and to that, do that. The, but his CS is accompanying him for <laughs> campaign rallies and uh, speaking in campaign rallies. Yes, Can yes, he... yes just, just listen. Okay. He is uh, supposed to tell Kenyans what he has done for the last four and a half years. And he then himself, the people of Kenya allowed him to select people to help him do the job. He indeed selected quite a number of uh, men and women capable. So all he does is to carry these people with him so that when you are talking about railway, he says, okay, we have done railway. This is the policy level. Details are with Professor Wainaina. Can you tell these people, our employers, they're right here, my employers and your employers, this is what we have done. It is only that because it is a campaign time, now you think this is campaign. He has to come with his team I'm to sure tell us. I'm sure there are other platforms that they can articulate and say what they have done in their ministries other than a campaign rally. <coughs> yes, there are other platforms. That's a fact. That's true. That's correct. But the fastest, the commonest, especially when they are now facing exams now, the president is facing exams, whether or not he should be given another five terms, mm -hmm. he should then come with his team and tell us, uh, these people that you have selected, Tell us what job you have done. All so right. there are some who will say, I have done this, but Matiangi, please tell me. I gave you education. I was given the job to deal with education. I also gave you. Tell them, then I also emphasize. It's like when you go to church, you can preach, then the, the bishop will come and do the blessings. And then people say, we are fully blessed. So this thing of every time you talk, if it is a rally, politics. Politics is when the civil servants themselves are engaged in trying to get those positions themselves or trying to bring down others and trying to ask others to be elected. If you see these people, they do not say don't elect Raila or don't elect Kalonso or don't elect who or elect President Hu. They simply say, when we were given the mess in education, this is, I, what, we this is what we did. Okay. And then you say, Matiange, now sit down. Now let's do the political part of it. All right, Prof. Um... It, it's, it's strange to hear Weda making the kind of arguments that, um, that he's making. But uh, my trust has always been with the people of Kenya, that the people of Kenya are not as foolish as politicians uh, think they are. You will remember when government started, when the Jubilee came into power, you remember a very powerful statement that was made by President Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto. And they said that there will be only two politicians in government. I, I, I'm, I'm sure you remember that. Yes, there will be absolutely. only two politicians in government. Mm -hmm. When issues were raised about Balala, about Ngilu being in cabinet. And the constitution is very clear about the work of CSS and what they can and what they cannot do. And the president and the deputy seemed well briefed about what CSS can and cannot do. What our problem is, is that we have a political class that has totally refused to pivot with the new constitution. You remember in the old constitution of Kanu, where these guys belonged, uh, ministerial positions were political positions that were given by the president to boost his, uh, his position. The new constitutional dispensation imagined a different structure where 
the political pitch of government is made by the president and probably the deputy president, and the rest of the government are technocrats who are implementing government policies. So when Manoa Isipisu tells us that the CSs are going around with the president, but they are not campaigning, and then Weda comes and tells us that they go around with the president, but they are giving particulars and details to the things that the president is doing. Remember, Michael, the new constitution envisages a presidency. The CSs are, um, I, don't, I don't use the word arms of the presidencies like you use legislature and, okay, they are program implementers of the presidency. Mm -hmm. They are not supposed to be politicians. And therefore, when Weda and uh, Manoa ECP so try to make a pitch to justify something which is absolutely unconstitutional, I hope that the people of Kenya are listening. I know that the people of Kenya are not as foolish as politicians. All right, uh, Yankem, just to weigh in on that before we move on to something else. Your thoughts? Thank you, Michael. I don't know whether I can just use a minute to weigh in on something else before well, I actually comment on Let's start with We'll come to the something else about that. <laughs> All right, that's okay. Um, to me, I actually don't see any problem with somebody protecting his job. The CSs, uh, whether they're accompanying the president, whether they're campaigning or not, is a question of the Constitution. And I like... Uh, what Weda said and uh, Prof said, I think we need to ask ourselves what part of the law are they violating? To me, actually, it is a bigger question of what the law says. And uh, as far as that matter is concerned, I think we need to ask IABC uh, what actually constitutes campaigns. Because if I'm performing my duties, never mind whether it is at a, a political function or not, mm -hmm. uh, we need to ask ourselves how far can I go in terms of articulating the policies and in terms of articulating the mandate of the government to the electorate. Okay, yeah. and Prof, maybe that would then be the question, what does, when we talk about campaigning, what exactly is campaigning? Uh, because like Wenda puts it, uh, if somebody is there virtually just to read, this is the mandate you as Kenyans gave us, and uh, we have done A, B, C, D. If it's the laptops, we have done, this is where we have reached. If it's uh, maybe to do with the energy, they're saying that this is how far we've gone. What's wrong with that? This is the problem of having unsanitized politics. <laughs> This is a problem of lacking decorum in politics, Michael. And that is why we want everything, even the obvious things, we want them defined, and even we want them legislated. And even when they are legislated, we do not have enough good manners in the political class for us to do the things that we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know whether Jubilee wants us to now go into the details of defining what a campaign is and what a campaign is, um, is, is not. Point being, Michael, even if you defined what a campaign is and what a campaign is not, when you have unsanitized politics and people who are used to bad manners, they will still find ways of circumventing what is going on. What we are asking as a people of Kenya, can we have decorum? Can we have good manners mm -hmm. in politics? Mm -hmm. Just allow me to explain. Yes, go right ahead. The Kenyan constitution, the Kenyan government is, uh, is, is fashioned on the American concept of a pure presidential system where the president is elected and then he selects various people to help him run government. Mm -hmm. It is not that the president is the one who talks everything. There are things that the Secretary of State tells the people. This is what we have done. This is our policy on Iran. This is our policy on Iraq. That is not politics. That is not campaigning. Please, let us not define things in the negative sense. Michael, do you know that it is not very clear exactly what constitutes uh, uh, campaigning? And, and For instance, when I come to you and give you some, uh, some bit of uh, sugar and uh, soda uh, as part of my mandate, you know, the law is, isn't that very clear. And this is why you see every politician right now is on the campaign trail, so to speak, because they know very well there is a loophole in the Constitution and in the relevant laws of our country that actually allow that. But at w what point are we as Kenyans going to get to a point where, I'll use Prof's word, have enough good manners to respect uh, things as they are? And I'll give an example. When we look at uh, corruption, for example, it is not that we do not have enough laws. It is not that we do not have enough definitions, but we still find loopholes within the judicial system and people get away with it. Can I take it? Yeah, sure. The heart of man, which even God himself does not, does not control. 
He can only appeal to you and say, please do this. The heart of man is deep waters, which no, the man himself can draw there. Until we change the hearts of people, until the people themselves change their hearts, there will be corruption. Mm. This thing professor calls manners. Decorum. Decorum. Okay? Mm. Until we reach a level where uh, politics is like, uh, uh, I, I don't know, it's, even in church it is there, people fight over it. So you, you don't have example. Until we reach that level of decency, mm -hmm. people will interpret their mandates in a way that helps them to fulfill their plans and desires. Mm -hmm. So I, as a cabinet secretary today, if I'm a cabinet secretary, I also wish to be cabinet secretary after August elections. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? Naturally, the, 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 it would be to help the sitting president to be re-elected. How will it be? I will go and explain how now Unga will be 100 shillings. I'll tell the people how I'm doing my mathematics and the treasury. That is not campaigning, Prof. That's okay. not indecency. That's <laughs> so just I guess it, self preservation. It's one of those that uh, will not get a definition and possibly not get to an end, but also would like to hear what you have to say, uh, those of you that are watching. But let's move on to something else. But before that, let me now introduce uh, Omar yes, Hassan, who is Senator Omar Hassan, who's joining us now. He's a senator from Mombasa County, also the Wiper Movement Secretary General. Good morning and thank you for oh. joining us. And you've just come as we are changing uh, pace here. But I'd like us to look at uh, the Daily Nation headline. NASA will tally and announce its own results, says Ryla. Now, I'd like to hear what your take is on this, uh, Senator, given that we have just gone through a very rigorous uh, exercise of uh, <coughs> trying to reconstitute, not really reconstitute, but to change the leadership uh, for IEBC. Is this going to be necessary? I, I think what, what NASA is saying is that it will not be generating its own results. All it's simply saying is that it will have, and I told you, I explained this last, last time here, it will have an agent in each and every polling center where, as per the law, the results are announced at the polling center and then simply mainstreamed into the national talent center. Can, can, we, so read, what, can so, we read this as a lack of trust on IEBC? It means that you just want to have a verification process to ensure that what, if let's say we are saying that um, in Tarakanite, we have, we have tallied 80,000 votes for Huru Kenyatta in a polling center X. Then you, and, and that result was announced. So you have taken a photo of it. You have probably transmitted it by WhatsApp to the National Tallying Center for the NASA, the NASA coalition. It simply means, therefore, when somebody else says it is 170,000, we are able to cross-check or counter-check those facts. So I don't, I, think, I don't think any contradiction whatsoever. Uh, and we are saying that as much as we have uh, confidence in terms of moving forward with IBC, there's nothing uh, that should stop or uh, create jitters with anybody who is saying that they will create a, a process where they can be able to have an independent uh, uh, process of verification of results. All right, Crispus, do you think that's the way to go? That, uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong in having whatever results are here uh, verified? I think I have a problem with that. And my biggest problem is actually what that speaks to the confidence in the IBC. This is a, a new team that has just come on board barely three months ago. And instead of us actually helping them to settle down, we want now to introduce other uh, sideshows that are going to eat into their confidence, the confidence that we should be building as Kenyans as we head into the elections. You remember very well um, uh, during the rally yesterday, I think uh, NASA or ODM was very categorical that they are going to have about 50 agents per polling stations. I don't know whether the, the law actually allows 50, 50 youth to be part of an observer group per polling station. I think that is a question. And you may want to ask exactly what that will do to a polling station. I think the mandate of IBC is very clear. And uh, Ambrose Weda and my brother Omar Hassan ought actually to help this country move forward. But having said that, I think I have a problem again with the way uh, NASA is conducting its affairs. Because when you look at it, the, the dance that has been on for quite a long time is about who actually is the presidential candidate. I think that is something that they need to sit down. And when they were forming the National Coordinating Committee of theirs, it was very clear that these, they were not going to hack.
-hmm. Yeah. All right, Weda. <laughs> I think we, 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 the Kenyans should call, call, call in the, the NASA bluff. They have perfected the art of dancing. But this one they're talking about, having agents in every, every polling station, we can call that, 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 that bluff because I know they are so disorganized. They will not be able to do that unless they will just be cooking results here and there and then announcing themselves winner. There was a question which was asked in this program the last time. Suppose the Atali says they are losing and the IBC tally says they are winning. Will they abandon their tally <laughs> and say, we refuse what the IBC is saying and confirm that we are not winning? Mm. You see, the, the hypocrisy you can see in this is just try to disparage IBC that you're incapable, you want to steal for NASA, you want to steal for Jubilee, you want to do this, so that they create chaos. But if it was well-intentioned, Every agent, every candidate should have a way of counting his or her votes. I know even the observers, the international observers, they also have something like independent uh, way of verifying so that they, they have the tally and they can give their reports. So it is not something that we need to weep over or pray over honestly that, oh, NASA have announced they will do their own tally. They are free to do their own tally. It is very normal for a candidate to do that. And then what we will make sure, we, they, they also accept is that the official tally is that from the IEBC. Okay. And let it not be that if the one from the IEBC shows they are losing with the two million votes, then they crook uh, their own and then they announce that they were winning so as to cause chaos in the country. If it is an intention to just verify, good. But if it is to say that if we lose this theft, that one we are watching and we are waiting for you. Um, <clears throat> two things, Michael. Number one, if it's a question of verification of votes, mm. talent, that has already been happening. I don't think that, that this is something new that NASA or COD or ODM is introducing. That is something that they have been doing, and they, those are some of the figures that they used to dispute the 2007 elections and 2013 elections. So that has been happening. What we are talking about here are people who are now escalating this private telling into a parallel system where they will announce their own. That's what the headlines say. They didn't, they didn't say that they will verify. Mm -hmm. They said they will announce their own results. The final arbiter on the matter of elections in this country is the IEBC. Anybody else claiming that they can announce parallel results, that is illegal. It should not happen. But we have an IABC, Michael, which seems either reluctant or unable to stamp its authority on these matters. And if the IABC does not do that, I see ourselves sliding down a very dangerous path yeah. while IABC watches. All right, uh, Senator Omar Hassan, I guess... Uh, those, are, those there are the opinions, as I said. Uh, there's no system that is perfect. The, the, the criticism or the, the feedback is acceptable. But you see, the problem is uh, we are the ones who are having our elections stolen. So we have, uh, we have also a duty uh, to ascertain ourselves to the, to the, to the, to the, to the uh, <coughs> accuracy of the results. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see any, any harm whatsoever for us to have our own turning center. Uh, to be able to uh, to verify results that are announced at the respective polling centers. All right. So, I guess uh, we'll move on from that. And uh, now, Senator Omar Hassan, uh, something that has been on the headlines for the last week or so is uh, the NASA unity. And one of the questions we're asking Kenyans today is whether they think that NASA unity is going to hold or it's going to fall apart. But before we maybe you weigh in on that and let us know what is happening in NASA, let's just listen to some of what has been happening specifically in WIPA party. And uh, of course, um, well, with Kalonzo announcing his presidential, uh, being the, f uh, the flag bearer for uh, WIPA party, of course, and that is natural. But let's listen into what has been happening. Then maybe we can weigh in on what is going on at, at NASA. At 63 years of age, why would I delay the decision to become president? Why? When you lose a Javen. Nataka kuwaomba waandishi wa habari. Tafadhali mukome kusema Kalonza anatoka, Weta anatoka, Musali anaenda kivyake, 
Raila anaenda kivyake kama hatutaki kukaa pamoja tunafanya nini hapa sisi zote All right we also have the sound bite where Nyenze was uh, basically making a declaration and saying that if it's not uh, uh, Kalonzo Musyoka then they would rather go it alone uh, Senator Omar Hassan I think you see yesterday everybody I, I saw it in the in the ODM rally in Kibera Literally similar assertions were made, which Nienze made. Mm. This hypocrisy that when Nienze says it, the opposition is about to fall apart is a system that is skewed to an opinion that is, that is uh, to, to a dominant or uh, one narrative. So I think, therefore, I do, I do, the people actually who are the threat to the NASA coalition are those who want to read uh, <coughs> anything sinister with what Nyeza has said. In fact, what I'm saying is um, uh, they, there is a point at which we believed Nyeza might have gone overboard. There was really no reason for him to call the NASA and Nyanza Super Alliance. There was really no reason for him to say we were going to bolt out. But, but the truth is we passionately, every, uh, every party has been passionately advocating for its own candidate. So therefore, I think to, to, to try and uh, make it appear like when it is said by Nyeze. Uh, and you know who, who, makes, who, who communicates on behalf of these parties. So when you make it appear like you, when you say it by Nyeze, then something, uh, that something is amiss. I think it's also pushing well, the narrative What maybe gives too. it a bit more weight is the fact that your party leader, Kalonzo Musioka, at some point said there's nothing to be retracted from what Nyenze says. So it would be viewed as though Absolutely. it is actually Kalonzo's voice. You know, if you recall, I issued a rejoiner. And at, that, at some point, we asked Nyenze to go and clarify. Further discussions, in fact, that day we were at Ole Sereni, that very evening. And there were other leaders also from Ukambani and other leaders, including Farah Malim. And we said, what is there to retract? Junaid Mohammed is saying the same thing. Hassan Joe is saying the same thing. Jacob Mudiwa is saying the same thing. James Orengo is saying the same thing. Uh, you know, you go to the SC fellow, uh, fellows uh, uh, le, le membership, they're saying the same thing. So what is, what is there That's to be retracted? Mm -hmm. uh, is just people making, you see what has happened? And these are the bloggers uh, Kalonzo has been talking about. For a long time, in the informal media, the social media, they've been creating this spin that Kalonzo is about to bolt out, Kalonzo has taken seven billion, mm -hmm. Kalonzo is no longer with us. So it is, in fact, if, to be honest, it's one of the blo some, some of the bloggers of one of the respective parties. So they've been creating this spin constantly. <clears throat> so what Nienze thing come, came and did was to simply validate all these spins that they've tried to create for the last, uh, you know, three, four months. You know, um, we are in Mombasa, they're saying he's in, he, he was meeting Uhuru at State House Mombasa, uh, Kalonzo comes here, they said they saw him Siju with who and who. I don't know, Sparta Malim was sent to pick seven billion. Do you know what it means to, to pick seven billion, my brother? Well, in this country, we have people carrying a lot of money. Yeah, in, but, but uh, do you know what it means to tennis. pick seven billion, my brother? Uh, trust yeah. me. I, I, I have seen 10 million, I have seen 20 million. It is not a joke to pick seven billion okay. in cash. So I think that, uh, that's it and done. So they, they pursued a narrative. Mm. Yeah, and then they were so angry. When somebody came and told them, you know, we might consider it. So what they did, they, they, they took this narrative of theirs and attached to this and, and gave it credence. So I, I, I think uh, no, none of these core principles okay. is, 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 is foolish enough to imagine that they can make it by themselves. All right, I'll come to you, Prof. I know you want to say something yeah. there. But let me hear from Weda. And uh, the thing is, what is this big deal of uh, Jubilee uh, trying to find out who the flag bearer is? After all, if NASA stays together, uh, like they have uh, previously yeah. said, whether it is Watangula, whether it is Kalonzo, whether it is Raila, any one of them is as good as any. No, 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 no. Why we want to know the candidate is so that we finalize on how we are going to defeat them. You get it. The way you arrange to defeat Raila is different from the way you arrange to defeat Wetangula is the same, the same way you arrange to defeat uh, Honorable Kalonzo. Once you have, let's say, uh, Raila, Honorable Raila as the presidential candidate, he will have to elect, select, um, running. And in this case, if he elects Kalonzo, 
we will then go down to Western and say, you are two gentlemen, just missed it. They are going into the oblivion for 20 years. That will be the battleground. If they leave Honorable Kalonzo, then we will be in Ukambani, battleground. So that is why we want to know. If they leave Honorable Raila, we will be near the saying, you see, we told you all this was a ride. So that is the dilemma in their camp. And Tayari wa menasa Honorable Kalonzo. But one thing I would like to tell Kenyans, one, in my study, one of the politicians that I know is far, is Honorable Kalonzo. It is only that when he talks, people don't listen. They ignore him until it is too late. Let me give you three examples. When he was with Moi, who made him? And President Moi selected our current president as the candidate. And he kept on telling, this one I will not accept. But everybody believed, oh, this one is a weakling. He will, Moi will put him back into the line. Eventually, he came out. Secondly, in, in 2007, he kept on saying, I will go to the ballot. I must go to the ballot. ODM Kenya is ours. And he was ignored until it was too late. This time he's also saying, the body, the blood is filling it. And I'll be there. But because they never listened to him, they keep on uh, ignoring him until it will be too late. It is not about Jubilee buying him or giving him money, but we are pleading with him. Let him come this side so that we form a quick government. And then thereafter, I can see how he'll be president 2022 or 2027, 2032. He is still energetic. Like him, these people have introduced him into the dance. A man who was uh, good. Now he's dancing aimlessly everywhere. All right. We want him to come. <laughs> Prof. <laughs> um, uh, it is strange that I find myself agreeing with Weda on <coughs> the fact that Jubilee is desperate to know who the presidential candidate is. <laughs> and uh, I have said that it is within NASA's interest to keep that decision for as long as it is possible to keep that decision unmade. Even if they agree on a presidential candidate today, the unveiling of that presidential candidate should be very strategic. So that they shouldn't rush just because they have a presidential candidate. So the, yeah, the decision of who the presidential candidate is and the announcement should be taken as a matter of political strategy. Mm. That once they have finally resolved their problems and they have picked a candidate, then how are they going to use that as a political strategy to undermine Jubilee strategy. I can understand why Jubilee is anxious to get to know who the presidential candidate is. NASA should milk that for all it is worth and delay that for as long as it is possible. But coming back to Omar and listening to the way Omar speaks, and Omar is a diplomat in, in the way he deals with these things, and that is why whatever you're gonna hear, coming from Omar in relation to Waipa is going to be politically correct. You will never hear Omar doing Anyenze. Uh, if Anyenze needs to be done, then Anyenze will have to be found because Omar cannot do Anyenze. What Omar is telling us is that there is trouble in the house of NASA, and that the trouble is not even coming from Jubilee. The trouble is coming from among themselves. There is hypocrisy. There are people who are uh, undermining others. There are people who are making it impossible for that space to accommodate voices which are not their voices. And this is how it starts. Remember. ODM was one of the biggest movements in this country, especially in 2007. Today, it is a shadow of its former self. And the people who have left them have made the same accusations that Omar is making, that you are doing business with hypocritical people, you are doing business with people you cannot trust, you are doing business with disorganized people, you are doing business with dictators, you are doing business with people who do not admit other voices and who demonize other voices that are not theirs. <coughs> it is the same thing that you're hearing from Omar, that we find ourselves in the same problems that many other people have found themselves in. Whether they are going to resolve those problems or not, I do not know. I wish them well. I suspect that those problems are deeper than we are able to see, and the person who has expressed the depth of the problem is Nyenze. It's not Omar. Wow. Let me, okay. because, because, you know, you have, uh, I'm seated right here. <laughs> no, and yeah. and <laughs> what his, the professor has kept saying, Omar is saying, 
Omar did not say what he just said. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? 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 Seriously, I'm sitting right here. The professor went on and on. Omar, Omar. I didn't know you're sitting right here. Omar is saying these people are hypocritical. I did not say that. I did not say most of that. But what I'm saying is that when there is internal political competition, sometimes the situation also does get murky. You know, I, let me to be honest about the 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 the, 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 the party <coughs> called Wiper. I went into Wiper and I found from ODM and I found a very very different political culture. Mm. In Wiper, you can you can speak where you want and say what you want, literally. And what we will do sometimes is to call you and tell you, please tone down your rhetoric. There there is a way in which you even convene a neck to say what the party leader the direction is given, we want to have a neck meeting. And come and say, OK, the, what was said yesterday, this is the party's position. I, I have seen a very, very, very different political culture. That you can, you can say something very nasty about the party leader today and still come for the neck meeting to, tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it is, it is, so I, I can tell you, I, may, I saw a very, I've seen a very different political culture in there, in the sense that um, there is a bit more uh, li liberty for people to be to have more than one singular opinion, like you will find that there is there is almost sometimes a divergence with some of even the, the political leadership, and you yes we will struggle hard <coughs> to say that there is unity, which is true that there is unity because a divergence of opinion is not necessarily uh, a, a, lack a, a lack of unity or disunity. Mm -hmm. So you will find that yes this guy is saying something slightly different, but but Kenyans are treated to these political parties. Well, when once Uru Kenyatta or William Ruto have said something, nobody else can, can have a divergence. When somebody else has said something, nobody else can have a divergence. But I, 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 I have strongly encouraged our members to have a divergence. In fact, I will say something, let's say, within the week. And we, if, you rea if you realize, Wiper has a, a neck every fortnight. It is just to ensure that we democratize our, 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 our party and also validate and legitimize our decisions. Okay. So even when I go to the neck after, let's say, a week or two, if, they, if today, let's say, I said something on the way it is because some many majority of them do watch it, they'll tell me what you said on the way it is was wrong. Or it was enforce it, reinforce it more. So these, these are some of the areas in terms of democratic maturity. But I'm, I mean, this one, I must be honest, particularly our friends in ODM. When somebody have a has a divergence with you, he does not become a mole. Mm. Oh, a Jubilee project. Mm. Look, I have I've, I've fixed, I've fixed uh, I, I, there's a post on my page today of, my, of a function I attended yesterday. And you look at the names, for instance, and I'm not trying to do any profiling, who are telling me, you know, you're a Jubilee project. Oh. And you're looking at it, you're like, I, I'm, probably your candidate is more <laughs> nearer to Jubilee in his, in his agenda, in his uh, etiquette, in his past corruption, in his integrity, than I am closer to Jubilee. Right. So I think it's very, very wrong. Whenever some, you disagree with somebody, he to, becomes to, a more... To be taken, that, yeah. that is a disagreement. All right, uh, uh, Kim, I'm coming to you, but let me take a call from Samuel, uh, who's calling from Dubai. Good morning, Samuel, and thank you for calling to your comment or question. Samuel. Uh, good morning. Morning to you. Uh, uh, my comment, uh, I just want to comment about Kenyan politics. To comment about? Kenyan politics. Mm -hmm. go, go right ahead. Kenyan, uh, Kenyan politics has been reduced to two political parties, but, uh, but yet uh, politics is all about the issue. And the issue, about, and the issue is about what Kenyan, Kenyan issue, and the Kenyan issue is about food, is about security, is about... Uh, cost of living, and if you know this uh, Kenyan politics in Taboti will become the present, uh, presidential cabinet of NASA or the presidential cabinet of Jubilee, it doesn't make sense to a common Kenya. They're supposed to discuss how we can reduce the cost of living, how we can reduce the cost of, how we can uh, enhance the things in the country, but we, uh, we just concentrate uh, on politics, uh, of, of political parties. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Samuel, calling from Dubai. We also have Madenge from uh, Mombasa. Madenge, good morning. Go right ahead. Yes, Madenge. Yes, Mzuri kabisa, Madenge. Endelea. Sawa. Kiswahili pia ni sawa. Sawa. Kiswahili pia ni sawa. 
nilikuwa nataka kwenda malipo hiyo mambo ya maasiye si kufanya campaign nilikuwa nataka kumwambia Mr. Weda asitudanganye kusema ati president akienda na maasiye si wanaenda kuzungumza ile kitu wanafanya kwa sababu uwezi kwenda na matiangi wakati unaenda kufungua barabara na matiangi ni mtu wa, wa education wakati unaenda kufungua barabara na matiangi akifika pale anaanza kusema ati NASA hawana kitu ya kufanya mpaka sasa yao jachagua flag bela hiyo sio sasa hiyo ndio mambo ambayo yatakana sisi si azungumze ndio mambo amefanya kitu ya pili nilikuwa nataka kusema kusema ati NASA wasifanye taring yao ya, ku, ya, ya kura hiyo ni makosa wacha wafanye kwa sababu hata uhuru Kenyatta wakati wa 2013 alikuwa na yake alifanya wacha wao wafanye tu ni mambo vile naenda kusudi kuweka ukweli ukukae wazi asante Aya sawa asante sana bwana Madenge and uh, we're going to come to the comments on what you think about the two callers but let me bring in Michelle who's got some feedback coming through social media Michelle All right and uh, still on the same uh, beat of the caller the last caller just had and uh, we had at Tat Yen here saying I'm wondering how Ambrose Weda can sheepishly support the illegality perpetuated by the Jubilee regime and this is with regard to uh, state house spokesman Manoy Sipisu yesterday saying that it is all right for cabinet secretaries to go out on the campaign trail with the president. And then he also says, with regard to the parallel tallying system, that in 2013, IBC could not explain some of the figures they gave to Jubilee. Jubilee had their own tallying center, so NASA is right. And uh, then uh, we have... Um, at uh, Vicky Pess saying thieves do worry if they see a trap set to catch them. A national tallying center, a parallel tallying center is uh, the wisest idea. And then uh, finally here uh, we have uh, Geoffrey Mukamba. Um, First of all, we have Jacob Bombati saying the panelists are concentrating on issues about Jubilee, but NASA know their own weaknesses. So a lot of feedback here coming in about the cabinet secretaries going out on the campaign trail with the president. Uh, many Kenyans here saying we, we hear what the cabinet secretaries say when they're out on those campaign trails. And so the, the, the spokesman cannot come out and tell us that they're not campaigning. Mm -hmm. So this is an issue that Kenyans are really, really want addressed. All right, thank you. And uh, keep your comments coming. Let me come to Chris Pasiankem. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's start off from Samuel in Dubai, who says, sometimes we spend so much time uh, discussing who is going to be president, who's going to be the NASA flag bearer, whereas we forget issues. And we'll shortly come to the budget and its impact. But maybe your thoughts on that. Maybe. Is it time that we matured as Kenyans to a point where we are literally not so bothered about who is going to be which president for where, but what issues are they articulating and how does that help Wanjiko on the ground? I think the caller is basically missing the point because actually the leadership of the country or any particular country determine the direction that that country takes and that actually speaks to the issues that are on hand. Right now, we are headed towards an election. We have a right as Kenyans to start thinking uh, deeply about what kind of leadership we want to install uh, come August. But having said that, let me just weigh in on the NASA affair. I think whatever we are seeing right now is the same script that was there in 2007 when Kalonzo Musioka opinion pollsters were actually indicating that Kalonzo Musioka was the favorite. And you remember that particular time Raila Odinga came out and said that uh, leadership is not about how beautiful you are or how handsome you are. In 2013 uh, and 2017 right now, I think it's a bit different uh, because opinion polls are indicating that Raila Odinga within NASA is actually the favorite candidate. Um, so um, let me say this, Michael. When somebody comes into your house, or visitors for that matter, and you exit towards the kitchen in an attempt to start now preparing a meal, people now start thinking that you, the job is going on in the kitchen. <laughs> But when they realize that two hours, three hours, you've not emerged with the food, they start now wondering, three things are possible. Is the fire out? Or has the food burnt? Or have you decided now to start eating food from the kitchen? That is exactly what is happening in NASA. Their supporters are asking exactly what is happening in the kitchen. And this is why I say it, that the National Coordinating Committee has the mandate of telling their supporters exactly what is happening in the kitchen. And when that committee was appointed, let me just go back to my earlier remarks. It was very clear that this team was incapable of resolving the dilemma that is facing NASA now. 
it is incumbent upon the four principles to step in and exactly resolve this matter. I totally disagree with Ambrose Weda and uh, Prof when they say that the timing is not right. Let me tell you, the more they continue waiting, the more Jubilee continues eating into their support base. And time will not be on their side yes, eventually. I did not say that the timing is not right. I, that, I think that's, that's, not, that's I, not the statement I made. I, the statement I made is that the announcing of the presidential candidate once it's agreed on needs to be a strategic. politically strategic move. I did not say that it's, it's uh, I didn't talk about timing. So if announcing immediately is a political strategic move, if announcing tomorrow is a politically strategic move, they can do it. If announcing it in May, end of May, is a politically strategic move, um, they should do it. My point was, the anxiety that uh, Weda was talking about that is within Jubilee because, like Weda correctly said, the Jubilee strategy will be informed by who the, is the candidate team? is. And therefore, there is an opportunity for NASA to make that a politically strategic decision. I, I didn't say that it's not let me, let me, let me, uh, in fact, you see how bad it is, Professor, when somebody says something you have not said <laughs> next to you. <laughs> when you say that, I wanted to respond to one of the issues earlier about uh, the caller from Dubai, Samo. Someone must realize that the me what I don't know whether media um, uh, one three minutes twenty seconds news item is accurate reporting of what transpired in a rally that lasted for four hours. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of things that are condensed into some kind of a soundbite. Mm -hmm. Like I yesterday I was uh, I was at a launch in uh, in uh, Changamwe. One of the aspirants was launching his campaign for the Changamwe seat. So he decided, please just come and uh, be part of this, this launch. So I did go. I talked about the garbage. I talked about the priorities of the county. I talked about reducing the cost of living through reducing uh, uh, you know, rates on foodstuffs and you know, uh, uh, the uh, Congo air, so that people then, you want to see that reflected on, on the reduction of food prices and you, you know, calling on how you work with other governors to ensure that we, we also harmonize you know, rates so that, that particularly those that affect food, so that uh, you know you don't have to be paying at every stop that a crate of uh, of cabbage is passing by, and things of that nature. But then I went and I delved on the question about how um, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta is influencing Mombasa politics by the small actions that he's taking against uh, the governor, and that we for, that we were opposed to to any person being locked out of the race in the next uh, in, in August. Uh, that became the news item. Mm -hmm. You see, that became the news item, and I knew if if I, they had not uh, gotten that that as the, as, a, as a news item, uh, they would have probably said the other issue I talked about about reassuring people about NASA unity. But it's about how I'm going to reduce the prices of food. I'm going to, how you're going to create an industrial park. How you you will, you know. So you in short, write. you did you did deal with some of the issues that affect even in these rallies, Michael. Michael, I think these rallies you see in Kibera. In mm -hmm. Okay. The, or the rallies you see in uh, Wajir, there is a, there's a style of these rallies. If you go to the rallies, you will see that first and foremost, you will have the local leaders greet the, the audience. Then you start to introduce some of the national leaders with, uh, before you come to the four principles. And when I, when, I am give, when I go to the stage, when I'm invited, I've already been told, you speak about this issue, which they think you're, you're quite conversant with. Then the next one is told you speak about this issue. So you'll find Halwale has been given this issue. I have been given an issue to speak about a young young and so on and so forth. Okay. Then you introduce the highest tier of leadership, that is the four principles. And when they come also, they, they labor. But what you will then do is, that maybe there may be a reference to Ruto, that Ruto said this yesterday, or we are going to say this tomorrow, or there was this that happened, and that becomes because there's a currency in terms of a headline, that becomes the news item. The news item. All right, Diane Kim, before we go to the budget, I want us to quickly move on to the budget and its impact. You wanted to say something. I wanted to say that uh, my brother, Senator Omar, also be taken through a newsroom so that he understands exactly what uh, forms news and how the news is made. I think that is the point he's missing because when you start now telling us that I spoke about issues that are affecting the common person, 
you know that's campaigning and the media doesn't uh, sit there to trumpet uh, uh, what exactly you are saying the media looks for what exactly forms headlines and what exactly forms news okay so, uh, so, so that's what i was saying i'm not interested in knowing how a newsroom works mm. what i'm simply doing was to respond to someone to, to someone, tell him yes. that it is not true that uh, accurate that we do not speak about that's this the, issue. the, the issue is actually the from uh, dubai there is somewhere mm. that we are talking about all the things the mm. presidential candidate i trust is almost our age and he lived when amin was alive <laughs> he should go and read his story of amin then let him go to Zimbabwe, again read what is happening there. Then let him go to South Africa and see what Zuma is doing there. Then he will know that the president counts, and that's why we want to know who among the, the, the four right. dancers. Ta time is time, time, time may not allow us to continue with that. Uh, Weda, I'd like to know your yeah. thoughts on the budget that was read on Thursday and possibly the impact. I, I think the budget was uh, uh, fairly good last Saturday. I went to buy unga and I found it was 150. I was myself very surprised, 150. But the chapati unga was 112. Uh, very surprised, and I think it is uh, timely that the cabinet secretary took action. In fact, unga in this country, flour, flour uh, the maize flour should be uh, below 180 shillings, 70 shillings. So he took timely action, and they should move very fast to import unga. Uh, the budget itself was fairly well balanced, fairly popular on an election year. It was relatively an election budget. But I also wish that the cabinet secretary should look into the debt. Uh, with my basic middle economics, we need to look at it and see how we cap it. Mm -hmm. If we move again ahead of it, then we will have we'll, problems. We'll have problems. Uh, Senator, your thoughts on the budget? It was populist. Um, it tried to provide for everything and uh, nothing, for that matter. Um, it failed to address, you know, you know, a budget must appear to address some of the more critical issues. And, and uh, from the issues around inflation, how, how you know, it's, 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 it's you know, you, you, here you are, it was a campaign, no doubt it was a populist campaign budget. That, that was not in doubt. And, I, and, and in, our, in our assessment, you know, there is a way in which we need to reorganize the priorities of public spending especially at a time when the country is facing extremely severe circumstances with respect to, uh, to the rising cost of inflation. So what you, you want to do, uh, you want to still um, spend with that, the level of op opulence. And you, so what then it, it happens, you start taxing everything, you start you know, putting a levy on to everything. You know, so you look for every little person to tax. And then you say you're a common man's budget and there's a relief for homes. This is a country that tax somebody who gets 13,000 shillings. It's immoral. You, 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 you needed to, to widen your tax bracket in terms of who, who it does not fall in that tax bracket. You know, 25,000, 30,000. So I think it fails to address the real issues. And what, is, what, what, what the, the budget was simply trying to do was to first and foremost uh, provide, make provisions for, for some, to clear some of the Jubilee projects that they've started, which are extremely wasteful. Uh, it was to, 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 to be populist in some arena in terms of, uh, you know, trying to give everybody something so that they can go now when, uh, during the campaign right. uh, and yes, say how yes, they've provided for you. And yes. briefly, because we are just winding up. Very briefly, I don't know, Michael, that there is anything that the Jubilee government is going to do this year that will not be called campaigning. Even if Uhuru coughs, they will say that he is campaigning. Even if he takes breakfast, they will say that he is campaigning. So I'm not surprised, and it's cliche to say that the budget was a campaign tool because a budget must be read. There is no way it cannot be read. So. Um, saying it is campaign, it's cliche, but also duale on today's uh, standard, saying that the budget will transform lives is, is uh, overstating. Yeah, yeah, it's overstating uh, what a Worst budget can and cannot can, do. Can yeah, yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Pasiankem, very briefly, your thoughts on the budget. True, I agree that the budget was largely a campaign budget, uh, but that is understandable. Exactly what should you believe be doing at this particular time? My concern is what policies are being put in place in order for us to tame the politics of Ugali in this country, because that is important. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That's where we'll have to wind up the way it is. Uh, Senator Omar Hassan, Senator for Mombasa.
Mombasa County, also the Secretary General for Wiper Movement. We also have Professor Michael Wainaina, who's a political and educational blogger, Crispus Yankem, who is a political analyst, and last but not least, we have Ambrose Sweda, uh, who is a lawyer. That's the way it is. This is where we're going to wind up the way it is, but do stay with us. Those of us on uh, KTN Home, uh, we change over to Life and Style. Those of us on KTN News, we've got some news updates coming up, and then later on, we do have your sports chat.